coming from other institutions, uh, many of you maybe have a good bit of research experience based on your background. So today's session will maybe cover things that you might not be familiar with, I hope. I like to um, show you some tips and tricks that um, maybe you weren't aware of before today, I hope. And um, uh, I, if you can see our screen, we're at library.cofc.edu, which is the library's website. The link is available from the College of Charleston's main site and also through My Charleston, uh, which I think has been renamed recently. Um, on our library website, you'll see the Discover tool, the Ask Us banner, uh, the Journals tab, the databases, and the guides, and I'll just briefly explain what you, each of these things do in case you need a refresher or in case your institution's library was very different when you got your undergrad degree. Um, I want to point out also that there's an Ask Us tab that when you're researching will come out and annoy you if you're heavy into researching, or either you'll find it helpful. Uh, the librarians take turns manning that desk so they're, they're on the chat, um, usually just during business hours or until uh, we have some extra help that comes in and, and mans this till eight at night. So different hours, if they're not manning the desk, they will um, just make a ticket for you and somebody will follow up with you. So I just wanted to let you know about that too. And we'll wait for LaToya to chime in. Hi, LaToya. We're, we're just getting started with a, just a basic introduction to the library website, and then I'll jump ahead to some tips and tricks that you might not be aware of. Um, the Discover tool is useful uh, as it's like the library's Google answer to Google, and it's useful because it provides filters that you can use to really narrow down your research, uh, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. The Ask Us tab allows you to uh, make contact with us through lots of different ways to chat or to set up a meeting for more in-depth consultation. Uh, the Journals tab here is useful if you are like reverse engineering something you found on the web and want to see, want access to the article you found. You use this to see if we own access uh, to the journal title you're interested in. Um, the databases is definitely where the bulk of every, every academic library's resources go. Um, the databases are full of uh, journal articles that are housed within different databases that cover different subject areas, and you would never know which one to use unless you were familiar with the databases. Uh, a, da a particular database name. So there's a back way to get into the databases and that's through the guides. And at the college and at most academic institutions, we all use the same software for these guides and they are the best resources collected by the librarians to support the majors and minors at any institution. And even libraries at, in different countries use the same setup. And so it's convenient when we're trying to help somebody who's, uh, for instance, calling us from the University of Belfast or something, and they wanna know what uh, resources are available to them. Um, so for instance, if you are a philosophy major, your resources would be very different than the resources suggested for geology majors. And this goes the same for um, graduate school. There is a resource guide for graduate students, so I'm just going to show you that because everything I say today has been captured in this resource guide. Let me move this over. Let's go ahead and type in graduate because grad didn't come up, So, but graduate probably will. Great. Okay, so there is a resource guide for graduate student services, including library services. And what I'm talking to you today is under this tab called Research Hacks. And so we're gonna look at Google Scholar. We're going to look at um, tinkering with the URL of uh, any web search to 
specifically do your research on the website. I hope you haven't, you didn't know that yet because that's um, one of the tips and tricks I, I really like to share with grad students. We're gonna look at the filters, um, both in our Discover tool and also in um, the databases. You're able to search multiple databases at once. I'll show you how to do that. And I particularly like using the thesaurus if offered in a database to build my search. And that's particularly useful if you aren't completely familiar with um, your subject area yet and you need to do a little deeper dive um, because the thesaurus allows you to use the words uh, that the library uh, resources use. Um, any questions from um, our participants yet? Latoya or Regan, this might be a good time to stop and let you guys uh, tell me what your majors are and also um, uh, if you're what kind of where, what institution did you do your undergrad in? Latoya, you want to go first? Yes. Hi, I'm Latoya Bates. I did my undergrad at Columbia College in Columbia, South Carolina, and I am actually in the MPA program. Okay, great. Reagan, how about you? I am running a master's in English at the College of Charleston through the um, dual credit program with the Citadel. And I did my undergraduate at um, Clemson. I have a degree in English in Clemson, and I have another master's in mass communications from University of South Carolina, Columbia. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, so USC does use these guides uh, the same as we do. I've, have you used them as an undergrad before? I did not because I am an older graduate student and things were not this sophisticated when I was in graduate school. Um, okay. Or at Clemson. I have been using them a little bit now and actually was in the library yesterday getting some assistance on a, a research paper I'm working on. Great. Okay, good. Um, well, I'll talk uh, just briefly about um, uh, the Discover tool. I'll use an example from uh, maybe LaToya, give me something you're interested in researching in public administration or something where your thesis is going. So there are a couple of articles that we've had a hard time trying to find. <laughs> Um, and I think one of our classmates, which is um, project management of public private partnerships. So okay. we've been trying to find a lot of articles, scholarly articles in public and private partnerships. Okay, I'm just gonna use that as a jumping off point. And remember, if I wanted to find a particular journal, I would use this journal tab, but for the demonstration, um, I am going to just do public, uh, and private partnerships, exactly what you said. Um, one of the things of, to know about our library resources is it doesn't understand natural language. So like Google, you can just type in a phrase, use very casual search terms, and you'll find some results. And the library resources, they want keywords, which are usually subjects or nouns and they like those strung together with the word and. So uh, just for demo, I'm gonna do public and private partnerships, show you how this Discover tool works. If at any time you come up with a little yellow banner that says it, it just make sure you click on that to sign in. It's the same sign in as my Charleston or authentication into Oaks. So looking at what I have over here on the left of the screen are my filters. So in that um, grad school hacks, research hacks, just it'll have, remember to use your filters. So that's what I'm referring to. So before I even look at the 1 million results I have, I'm gonna look at my filters. So um, we have here peer reviewed journals. Uh, which might be useful for you. We have also a date range. You might not want 1700 to 2022. So you can go ahead and adjust your date range here. We have which library are uh, the holdings are in because the College of Charleston Libraries has a few different partners. We have every research institute, um, the Adelstone Library, 
the Marine Resources Library out on uh, Fort Johnson uh, on James Island and Special Collections and the South Carolina Historical Society, uh, which isn't really useful perhaps for either of you two, Reagan and LaToya in your majors, but perhaps some of the history majors, um, it would be useful. Um, unless you're doing historical research for public administration. Uh, you can further limit by newspaper articles, uh, book chapters, uh, videos, if you, uh, data sets might be useful, archival materials. So just pay attention to those filters. Um, also, you can, the discover tool, that main search box, our answer to Google also brings up lots of different types of resources. So it brings up both books, book chapters, reports, videos, all of that in one fell swoop. Um, another couple of things that are useful before I leave this area are um, a permalink. If I wanted, if I was working with my professor or advisor or um, a co-author and wanted to share this resource, you can just share the permalink and they can get to the same uh, cataloging information. And if it's full text, they can access that through that if they're a, a College of Charleston um, person, community member. Uh, so that's just looking at the filters in this discover tool. Now I, I want to um, go over to guides and to look at maybe I'll use one of the resources for public administration or English and just look at um, how to use the thesaurus, which you, you may not have done to build your research. So the guides, like I said, there's one for grad school and uh, there's also guides for the majors and minors. So there is a public administration one here or there should be, uh, if there's not, it's my fault because I'm the liaison for public administration. <laughs> and there is one for English as well, English and literature. So if I don't see public administration, I don't really want to use public health. Well, I'll make sure and, and look at that later. Uh, and make sure that we have one. So let's just go to English and literature since we've got an English person here. There should be a basic English research one. That's the one I'm looking for is English research. So when I bring that up, if I click on find sources, it gives you some specific subject specific databases. And of course this is different for each, whatever the subject area there is but it also will give you some generic ones. Let me see if I can find that. Now let's go back to find sources. I'll just bring up this one and see if it's a, an EBSCO database. It's not. so. Let's just go back to the list of databases and let me get one of the ones that I, I want uh, for the demo purposes. So academic search complete is often listed in any of your uh, research guides because it's kind of a multidisciplinary generic one. And it's real good to, to start off showing you these other things that I wanted to show you. This you may have seen as undergraduates, you may be familiar with it, it's useful, but it's not all you can do with it. So I'm gonna show you some things um, to kind of make it a more powerful tool for your research um, in graduate school. Over on Choose Databases and in the grad school research guide I showed you, I give you a hint if you forget what I say today, just it's remembering that you can search multiple databases at once. So when I click on choose databases, I am th then going to get all these other databases that are um, provided from this particular vendor and I'm gonna add them. So we will have, I think, 
a public administration abstracts, which might be useful to you. Uh, we will have other things that might be useful to the more business people like business source complete. I'm just gonna select a few of them, political science complete perhaps. Um, anytime you need to know what these are about, you can hold your cursor over the little window and it gives you an explanation. So just throw as many of them as you want into this search. I, if I'm into psychology or if your areas delve into psychology at all, the psychology um, databases are particularly useful. And um, so that's fine for right now. Lots, lots of different hospitality and tourism, maybe for public administration might be a little bit useful. So when I've selected all of the ones I want to um, include, I can select many different databases. Another thing to pay attention to is any of these filters. If I'm just looking for a particular um, type, like a newspaper or a, or a book, or even in um, a different language, I can, I can limit to that. If I'm looking for a, diff, um, a case study, I can limit to that. If I just need some uh, charts or illustrations for my presentation or to go in my uh, thesis, I can, I can select that at this point. So lot, that's again, filters, lots of different filters to choose from. Um, and then in your graduate school, school research guide, I mentioned using the thesaurus when it's provided to boost your research. Uh, this, because we chose a couple of different databases, there is a business thesaurus and a, a thesaurus in Academic Search Complete. Many databases have their own thesaurus, so just remember to use that. And this helps with your development of your keywords that the library databases and resources need. Keywords are so important. When I'm doing research, um, you know, I start with a wide net and then I just kind of narrow it down as I learn more about the subject. So when I'm looking for things, I'm, I'm out there on Google, I'm out there on some, um, some organization websites maybe, I'm in the thesaurus and I'm looking at abstracts of many different articles. Um, when I'm building this research, I just keep a piece of paper beside me and I write down those keywords because I will tinker with my searches. I'll start a new search over and over again and just change the keywords I use to get many different articles that are gonna be useful for my, that my thesis or my article. Does that make sense? Okay, Reagan, you good? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Reagan, since um, I haven't picked on you yet, how about uh, a, a term? Take away. I have, a, I have a great term, kind of abstract idea for this paper that I'm working on. I want to write about the experience of women during the war, not women who are actually fighting or involved in the war. I'm looking at um, the Great Gatsby and Sir Gowan and the Green Knight. Oh, cool. Okay, so what war? Well, so in Gatsby, it's World War I. And of course, in Sir Gowan, it's not really actually a technical war. It's the, the threat. It's the, you know, author in the round table, King Arthur in the round table, and the, the challenge of the green light. Okay, great. So you're looking at a couple of different time um, frames and... Um, uh, what what ties those together are are the experience of women, right? In a in a in a and in their roles, perhaps, in those two different time frames. And I guess you're because you're an English major, you're probably looking at symbology and um, all kinds of things, right? Right, like their lived experience, their social experience as a result of their lack of agency during those wars. Okay, since we are just in a thesaurus right now, there's definitely some ways to tinker with that, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do wartime 
And I usually choose term contains instead of term begins with, because I don't know if a, a phrase using wartime is going to um, be at the beginning of a phrase or in the middle. So when I look at uh, wartime, I have lots of different um, keywords and art and war, wartime censorship. It tells you wartime, if I was looking at wartime industries, use in the words industrial mobilization. Uh, if I want maybe none of these are really getting at what I would look for for your topic, Reagan. For your topic, I would look at the English Library Guide and use those databases suggested there. But just for demo purposes, we can look at what economic warfare, um, how the thesaurus works uh, for this. So you have a, a scope note. So this particular uh, term, uh, sometimes it tells you when this term was introduced into the vernacular, which is useful because terms change as you're doing over time, as you're doing research. So for instance, what a broadsword is called in Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, they aren't using that in, perhaps anymore in World War II or I? One. 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 Um, but they're, they're using other weapons of war. So um, you would get a scope note of that, of those things. Um, a, a good example is African Americans. African American, um, if you're doing historical research on that population, th that population was not called African American for, for very many years. You would use other terms depending on when you wanted your research from. You'd use the terms used at that time. Um, so looking um, you get a definition right away, which is useful. And then um, I have a broader term, which is just war. So if I, if I want the broader term, I can get that scope note. And then I can get some other um, um, terms suggested, suggested. And again, I would just be writing these down to build my keywords. Uh, causes of war, blockade, um, children in war. They probably do have, if they have children in war, I bet they have women in war. So women in war, women and war, both of those are recognized as terms. If I was using, uh, let's, let's use this to just build the, use the thesaurus to start to build our search. So if I want women in war, I would click on it and then your default to add to the search is or and that's fine. I'm just going to add to it. Um, it binds the term for me, which anytime you're using a phrase um, or you want a, a phrase words to appear together, bind them with quotation marks. And then I would put the word and um, I could put uh, Middle Ages and see what I get. And I do get four, which is amazing because we are in not necessarily the correct databases for your subject. We are in Academic Search Complete, Business Source Complete, and Public Administration Abstracts. That Those aren't the right ones. Um, for your search, I would go to the database, go to the guide, and look at the English um, suggestions and use those databases. Um, while you're here, you guys probably know this, uh, but when you see an article that you like, just click on it and grab the citation. The citation is over here on the left. You'll notice you can get it, all the different styles are represented there. You'll notice too that I can um, add to Google Drive. I would suggest doing that. Um, keeping, you know, getting good about using Google Drive to make folders. Uh, share with your advisor and or, or with your um, co-author and um, um, just get used to working in Google Drive because it has an automatic backup so you don't have to worry about losing anything you'll you'll save it automatically um, grab the site like I said and also at this point I'd pay attention to the abstract 
and see if I can, if I have any other um, keywords I need to pick up on. Uh, I would say for you, women and participation and war might be a good a good phrase um, or a good set of keywords. Any questions of what we've done so far? We've shown you that we can, whenever you have the chance to search multiple databases at once, take advantage of it. Use that thesaurus to identify your keywords. Anything else before we leave the library website for a minute? Okay, I want to show you guys how to use Google Scholar. And I'm going to have to just change my window for a minute uh, just so I can see. Google Scholar is just scholar.google.com. And if you forget, I think I've no, I gave you the steps in that graduate school guide. I gave you the steps of how to tie Google Scholar in with our library resources. And I'll show you right here. Every browser is different. So it depends what browser you, you're, you're using. We're in Google Chrome right now. But what you're looking for is settings. Sorry, I have to keep moving our pictures away because they're in my way. When I click on settings, then I get library links. And if I don't have the College of Charleston listed, I would type that in. Once it comes up, just check it and click save. And then from here, um, case law might be interested, interesting depending on you know some of your research, uh, especially you, Latoya, and public administration. But for this, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to use articles. And because we were talking about, uh, we left off with, is Reagan still with us? Oh, she dropped off. Okay. Latoya, let's use you then. Um, what are some, uh, you said public and private privatization, public yeah. companies and partnerships with private companies? Yes. Okay. Uh, public, uh, let's see. I can even be like this, in the field of public administration, what are great examples <laughs> of public and private partnerships? Okay, a, a phrase like that would never fly in um, the library resources, right? Mm -hmm. But Google Scholar understands natural language, which is one of the reasons I like it. Another reason I like it is it brings up databases and sources. Let me close my door for a minute. Uh, my phone answering machine picked up and somebody's talking on it. Um, it also picks up databases I never would have thought to include on a suggested database in the library guides for mm -hmm. your majors and minors. Um, so it brings me to different databases. It brings me to different to databases I would never in a million years suggest to you either um, in your field. So I, I like it for that reason. It brings me to resources I, I never would have considered otherwise. So natural language and also those, those other resources. I've connected it to the College of Charleston. So what I'm looking for now is a little at uh, C of C. If I, if I don't see that, I'm looking for this view it at C of C. If I don't see one of those, um, it's, the PDF is probably open source and available to you. So you can just find it without any problem. You will have some books as well as articles here. Again, you can somewhat filter. I can um, click on the date range and, and change that. Um, I can also go ahead and grab my citation from here. And there it is in all the major styles. And it usually will path you through nicely straight to the article in if we own it at the College of Charleston. So for instance, this one, 
do I have the full text to get access to? No, it didn't path through, which probably means that we don't own Journal of Comparative Policy Analysis, Research and Practice, um, but I can interlibrary loan that. And as um, a graduate student, I would definitely suggest that you sign up for interlibrary loan. The link is here on the main uh, library website. Interlibrary loan, it's just, it's a free account and you can order things from anywhere in the world. Um, and a lot of times if you're doing your research at the time um, and you see that we don't own it, it will populate the fields for you automatically. So it makes ordering it that is e much easier. And articles usually, uh, Dr. Booker, has it been your experience? They drop into your mailbox pretty fast. Yes, within hours. I know, it's incredible. It is very, um, very fast. <laughs> it's very uh -huh. fast. We used to say three weeks, right? And now mm -hmm. it's like, by the end of the day, you're going to get those resources that you need. Um, so I showed you, do you have a question, Latoya? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, my apologies. So when we are trying to find scholarly articles and it comes up abstract, but we kind of need that immediate. Is that what you're saying when we go to the ILF? Okay, perfect. Okay. Yes. And that. definitely check here first. Like you said, you were having trouble finding a couple of journals. So mm -hmm. definitely check here first. Um, for a demo first, let me go grab this Journal of Comparative Policy. Oh, sorry. Just trying to grab this title. This is the journal title. This is the whole journal title. So I'll just copy that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back to my library and uh, go to the journals tab and see if we own it. And it's as I suspected because there wasn't a perfect path through to the full text. We don't own it. So that's when I would interlibrary loan it. Okay. Yeah. And you never have to pay for anything. You're already paying money for your, your education. Don't pay for these articles. We can get them for you through interlibrary loan if we don't own them. But if you're looking for a particular journal, you've got the citation, you want to track that down, try this first. Uh, they also might tell you to, oh, you'll, you might get something in email saying, Pass, check the Pascal catalog because Pascal, you can access this title through Pascal. Pascal is right here. It stands for the Partnership Among South Carolina Academic Libraries. It's all of our state academic libraries. So even if we don't own it, somebody else in the system might and, and you can get it from there. And it's a little bit uh, quicker than interlibrary loan. Um, to get it from, say, Clemson, if Clemson mm -hmm. owns it. And for that, I would look at um, probably the, the title. Let's see. And... I'm probably not searching this correctly um, in the Pascal catalog, um, but we can definitely help you with that. Just remember to click on the Ask Us or make an appointment if you need help tracking down those resources. Okay. That wasn't a, a, good, a good shareable, uh, teachable moment because I messed myself up. And, I'm not taking the time to see how to research it, how to look for the Pascal item correctly. Um, any other questions about what we've done today? Um, one thing I didn't show you, I, we didn't talk about primary and secondary sources, but there is a fantastic guide on primary sources. And primary sources, as you probably know, are just, um, it. all that means is they are um, documents created at the time of the event. So if I am searching um, 
something that happened in 1880, it would probably be in a diary or a newspaper article from 1880. Um, and there are examples here in the primary sources guide. Uh, secondary sources are things written about that item. And there are lots of resources under find articles and web resources to find both primary sources and secondary sources. So I didn't mention that earlier and I know that was in the description of today's workshop. So any other questions from either, either of you? And I know if anybody out there who's watching this recording afterward um, needs some assistance, please just uh, make an appointment with me. My last name is Finch, like the bird, and you can just uh, search in the guides uh, for my last name or browse the guides. When you click on browse guides, you're able to search by librarian as well. And this is me and my contact information. Any of these guides will have my contact information on it. Okay. So um, that's that's really all I have to say for today. Uh, remember, there's a grad student guide that will allow you um, to re re review everything I said today. And again, that's under graduate on the guides and it is under research hacks. So everything we talked about is mentioned under research hacks to kind of remind you Thank you for